It was 22 below zero this morning. And I'm not sure what it is now with the wind. They said it's supposed to be 30 below. The main thing that affects me is, is equipment. Equipment not working when it's that cold. Great, great grandfather was logging and their family was logging before that a long time. Most of my family was from Lee in Wolf County, Kentucky, and then they moved up to Crandon. The mill had bought land in northern Michigan, and that's how they ended up up here. Move over, boy. And I log with horses. I'm the fifth generation in my family to do it, and uh, I've been doing it full time for about eight years. I love working with animals. Now I gotta warm his bit up, because he don't like a cold bit in his mouth. So I gotta put it under my shirt for a minute, or my coat for a minute here, and get it warm. My dad had teams still when I was a kid. I remember when I was little, going into my grandpa's barn after he had retired and seeing all the harnesses hung there, and, and I was just always interested in it. In the 90s, we had a lot of crews working. We had probably nine crews working at the time, nine different um, skidders and forwarders working. And my dad and I just always talked about going back to horses, how much simpler it'd be, how much more we'd like it. And about eight years ago, I just decided to make the jump and jump into it full time. He's got a very soft eye, and it's because he trusts me. If he didn't trust me, he'd, he wouldn't look that soft in the eye. I use Belgians right now, but I've used every kind. There's good horses coming every color, so it really doesn't matter, just as long as it's a good team. One thing when you're working horses and you're, and you're horse logging, oh boy, oh, oh. It's a thinking man's sport for sure. And you're always looking at angles and you're always looking at the physics of how to get, how to get this big log to move. Back, 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 back. It was never that the horse was not efficient or couldn't do the job. It's that people got tired of running them and the, the guys that knew a lot about them kind of faded out. Most mechanized crews, they, they need volume. It's such a volume-based market nowadays. Whoa. Whoa. I don't have to take the amount of volume, and I can get into a space that's, all right, buddy, you ready? At times 38 inches wide or 40 inches wide. Good job, Mark. With a machine, a lot of them are 10 feet wide. So just a lot more disturbance when they have to come into the woods. That timber there, that was a very low-grade red pine. If I was to sell that on the market as pulp, a whole truckload of it might be worth seven or eight hundred dollars. You know, but I can I can hew those into a fireplace mantle, and you know somebody will give me a couple hundred dollars just for one. Come on, Mark. Gee, gee. It's a worthy profession. You know, a lot of people disregard it and they think of it as almost like the romance of it or the nostalgia. And it's not just nostalgic. It's it makes sense for a lot of people to do it this way. Good boy. Whoa, good boy, whoa.